My name is Bernard Albertson. And for more years than I care to remember, I've been writing children's books. I have a series of books here that I'm going to share with you this morning, and I will share one story with you each week as we go along. The name of this book is So You Think There's No Santa Claus. Now this book is about Santa Claus's journals, or St. Nicholas's journals. When he made deliveries, he would make remarks and write them down in a book or write them down in his journal. And I took uh, some of those writings and created this book. I'd like to read you the dedication to this first book, the first of two. This first book is dedicated to my helpers, to all of you who take the time each year to put on the uniform and brave the weather and the crowds. To you, who hold the children listening patiently to requests for things both wanted and needed. To you, who spend the time in hospitals or stand in the cold ringing the bells, reminding everyone of your love for the needy. To you, who in the true spirit of the Christ child show to the world the true spirit of Christmas. It is you who deserve the credit. I salute and thank you. That's a note directly from Santa Claus. Most sincerely yours, S. Claus. Now this first thing I want to share with you, this first little story here, happened in Europe in 1936. Christmas of 36, it had been 15 minutes after we, it hadn't been 15 minutes after we'd left the coast of France. I noticed there was a great deal of fog when we crossed the channel, but hadn't paid much attention. Anyway, we'd made several thousand deliveries and were headed for London when it happened. Fog bank, a huge fog bank, a London fog bank no less. The boys, who were the deer, actually it was the boys and girls, but here I call them the boys. The boys were in it before we knew what happened. Normally when there's an emergency like this, the boys make an adjustment, and we are in and out of the situation without much trouble. My lead deer dropped down intending to get under it, under the fog bank, so we could at least see where we were going. We kept getting lower and lower, when suddenly we heard this terribly loud whistle. Well, it scared the boys something awful. To make matters worse, we found ourselves right in the middle of a thick black smoke that smelled a lot like sulfur. It was a train. There we were, flying right along about 10 feet above a train full of people headed for London town in coal smoke. The next thing I know, we were turned on our side and all the presents in the sleigh were pushing against me. I was busy trying to get the boys turned back upright and holding everything in at the same time. We couldn't lose the toys. Just as I was able to get them straightened up, everything got really black and we couldn't see anything at all. It was then I realized we were not only just above the train, but we were in a tunnel as well. We bumped the top and the sides of that black hole in the hill for what seemed like forever. Sparks were whizzing past and presents were beginning to get skinned up. It was awful. When we came out the other side, we just had to stop for a while. I know. I spent at least half an hour brushing cold dust off the boys and myself. Of course, once you've been in that situation and are that dirty, there is no getting cleaned up until you get home. Anyway, for the rest of the night, I'm afraid I left the coal dust in every house I delivered to. Some of you may remember it, you moms and dads. Mrs. Claus wasn't happy about all the dust on my outfit either and the boys griped for months. That was some night. My snack that night, and I had a snack each night, 
Mrs. Cole has always packed me a snack. My snack that night was was uh, uh, goat's milk and fresh bread from Greenland. That's it for the story for this week. I'll see you back next week here about the same time. You can find me on Facebook, Bernard Albertson. Just type my name in and um, I'll come up on Facebook. Also, I'll be on YouTube. And uh, you mind your mom's 